Mr. Rinvestilla, welcome back to the channel, baby. I've been away for a while, I've been grinding, I've been making shmoney so I can buy the dip. Today we're going to be talking about bio nanogenomics because I've seen some researchers pick up the sapphire, start to look at optical genome mapping and start to experiment. And now I've seen an interesting picture I want you guys all to see. But before we begin, please remember this is not financial advice, it's for entertainment only. My man, oh man, is this tasty? Over on Stock Twits, we saw Cisco Trader talking about Cumber Daddy finding the Innovation Fund with National Brain Appeal granting an estimated $65,000 or 48,000 pounds to this guy, Dr. Boogie Adoni. I don't even think I said it right. His name is Dr. Enrico Biogiardini and he's looking to improve diagnosis and hereditary neurodegenerative disease and he's using optical genome mapping to explore this. In fact, he's looking to explore a new technology known as genome optical mapping, optical genome mapping. But is this with the sapphire is your question? Now, today we've seen a picture that has been released that confirms it. But first of all, who is this man? Where is he from? Why does he matter? Well, Dr. Enrico Biogiardini is a clinical research associate at University College of London. And this is what I mean when I was talking about Russell Group Universities and people experimenting with the Sapphire machine. University College of London is London's number one university for research strength. It is in fact a major public research university. And fun fact down below, it says that it's the second largest university in the United Kingdom by total enrollment and largest by postgraduate enrollment. In terms of medical universities, UCL, University College of London, is one of the top medical universities in the world. And in terms of medical schools, school it is ranked ninth in the world in the QS World University rankings. It's one of the top medical universities in 2021. So this guy Dr. Enrico Biogiardini was given some money by a charity called the National Brain Appeal. The National Brain Appeal raises funds in neurology and neurosurgery. It raises funds for UCL Queen Square Institution of Neurology and this national hospital is one of the world's leading centers for diagnosis, treatment and care of patients for lots of different diseases and comorbidities including stroke, multiple sclerosis, brain cancer, epilepsy, Parkinson's and dementia. So this guy is going to be using the Sapphire machine and just to confirm it we saw his colleague. In fact just today the 20th of February his colleague Stephanie said that she is very proud to be part of the team setting up this new technology at University College of London. This segment of University College of London is the Queen Square Institute of Neurology and in this picture not only do they have bionanogenomic Sapphire here but look at the amount of consumables, the amount of chips that they've got on the wall. If you zoom in on the picture you can see there's stacks on stacks on stacks. So you guys might be saying yes yeah, a few consumables on a wall yes yeah, a bio nanogenomic sapphire you know we're going to need hundreds of machines in order to create a great company but the fact is the top research universities are using this to explore its efficiency the sapphire's efficiency and what's also interesting to take a note of is they're actively allocating funds to explore optical genome mapping and they want to assess how effective it's going to be in diagnosing the most common neurogenetic diseases including front temporal dementia als nerve damage and muscular dystrophies which can be missed by next generation sequencing. Like we said before, next generation sequencing, although effective and successful, diagnosis rates remain low. So just 20 to 30% of patients screened are successfully diagnosed. So this is one of the limitations of NGS, where they are unable to detect the presence of large defects in the genome. They said that these large defects include repeat expansions, where a sequence of DNA is repeated multiple times, and structural variants where entire genes are missing. And in Cytopia, structural variants have nowhere to hide. So that's why they've taken on the Sapphire and why they're looking at optical genome mapping as it's a promising new technology that can improve diagnosis of these conditions. The National Brain Appeal has also said that in terms of uh, demand, consumer demand, genetic testing is requested for at least 200 patients who are assessed every year at the National Hospital. Complexity of their genetic background and current limited testing makes the diagnostic process long and challenging, leading to delays in appropriate care, genetic counselling and access to clinical trials. So hopefully this project that they're doing will directly benefit these people and help them receive accurate and fast diagnosis so they can get the right care and the right treatment as quickly as possible. So one of the things I remember in a previous video um, when Mark was saying, you know, why don't you think of the consumer? Why don't you think of the people? And uh, after he was having the discussion with the CEO, the founder of Bionanogenomics, Eric Holmlin, um, he said, you know, 
I hope you think of, you know, your daughter and, and this kind of stuff. What he needs to understand is the reason why we want to get these out to the labs is because we have professionals like this, top level researchers at top level institutions who will go and do the work. If you get the Sapphire out to the lab, this guy will be able to experiment with his team, use the machine, find out how efficient it is for different comorbidities, different diseases. We'll be making money off these consumables and ultimately you are helping people because you're going to get them fast and accurate diagnosis to get the right care and treatment as soon as possible. But only if this project is successful, you want to get this out to the lab so you can get these people onto projects. With current data on optical genome mapping, it shows that it's potential, it's promising, further work needs to be done. So the study that they're doing will enable them to take this step and determine whether or not it's going to be effective, it's going to be efficient in clinical diagnosis of neurogenetic disease. And once you get these guys experimenting with the machine, take a look at the number of publications he's done before. 111 publications, but these guys are super excited to get started with the Sapphire. And in terms of Stephanie, his colleague, she's had 89 different publications. And about four years ago, UCL was talking about, you know, a digitalized future for the NHS. So they were assessing new technologies like how they are assessing optical genome mapping right now and assess how these new technologies are gonna help shape the future you know, genomics, artificial intelligence, bio nanotechnology, and how they're going to shape the future of healthcare here in the UK for decades to come. What you guys also missed was there was actually a, um, there was a lecture or they were presenting, you know, bio nanogenomics. Someone from the UK was presenting at University College of London. It was an event that was upcoming and people were just saying, you know, it's just a presentation. This presentation obviously worked. These guys managed to secure funding now to say, we want to use this machine for this project, for this purpose. So the more presentations we're putting out there, the more active we are in the field, the more events we're attending and showing people this machine and what researchers are finding and allowing these researchers to present their findings with the machine, then we can ultimately get new sales or get new rentals of the machine and get people experimenting, securing funding and using up consumables. In terms of analysts, all these bingo analysts have now uh, changed. You know how they are, analysts, schmanalysts. They changed with the wind and they now said, you know, the 12 month forecast, the high will be $9.50, average is $7.75 and the low is $6. But while it's at $2 right now, I've continued to gobble up shares. I've now increased my share ownership. I have 3000 shares of bingo and with my new job, I get paid monthly. But um, if the stock continues to drop or while it's down here, I'll continue to gobble up because I believe this is going to be returning some juicy revenues in the future. And this is not financial advice. This is only my opinion for entertainment only, but it's also my plan. I just continue to gobble up shares. I've got 3,005 shares right now of bingo. And I want to build this position out to actually 10,000 shares, hopefully, if I can continue working as hard as I can. I'm working so many hours right now as an agency nurse, just trying to make as much money as possible. But if we look over the estimates on chart mills, they're saying that bingo's yearly revenues for this year is going to be around about $28.5 million. But in the future, 2025, they're stating that they believe the estimate will be about $160 million. And this is kind of the growth that they're expecting. But if we do get a major client that adopts a lot of machines or the labs start to adopt the machine on, and if Bingo manages to get that major adoption by the labs, by all of the customers that we're after, Larry Raymond's written an article on Investor Place stating that Bio Nano stock looks to have a monster comeback in its future. And his bottom line on Bingo stock believes that Bio Nano Genomics will be able to soar 500% to 1000% over the long term. Like I guys told you, I'm in this for the long run. I'm in it for five to eight years, possibly even longer, but I want to have at least 10,000 bingo shares. I'm going to keep buying as much as possible. I'm also looking at um, some NFTs at the moment. I'm also looking at a marketplace called Treasure Dow. So there's something I'm looking at investing in the long term too. So tell me, what are your thoughts? What are your predictions on bio nanogenomics? Where do you think we'll be in 12 months time? What is your forecast? And what are the reasons why? Do you think we're going to be able to drive major global adoption of the Sapphire machine? And what year will it be when we'll start to see a lot of machines adopted? Well, we'll see like 100 and a quarter. Anyways, guys, I've got some good videos lined up ahead. Um, I'm continuing to research. I'm learning all the time as well as working in like 65 to 70 hours a week i'm grinding at my job at the moment but thank you guys for being patient thank you for always supporting the channel always remember none of this is financial advice and it's for entertainment only i'll catch you in the next video mr over and out baby